So when Fayetech reached out to me to review one of their products, I thought to myself, do I really want to become a puppet of one of these mega tech companies? Do I want to sell myself out that way? What are my subscribers and viewers going to think if I suddenly just take the first offer and uh, and yeah, just go for the go for the freebie just because you know it's on offer? And then I thought to myself, I need a new gimbal. So this is the vlog pocket from Firetech, and this is what I'm going to be reviewing. Now when Firetech got in touch with me, they asked me what gimbal that I wanted to review, and I picked this one. I could have picked a much bigger one, I could have picked a much more expensive one. I think this is possibly the cheapest one in their range. But the reason that I picked this one is because I think this will be, well certainly for me, the most useful one, and possibly for some of you guys. So who's this aimed at? Well, I would say because it's got such a small form factor, it's aimed at probably travel vloggers and uh, people who want to go out there, record their experiences, but want to travel light. Uh, it's a mobile phone gimbal. Um, now, let's address the elephant in the room here. The elephant in the room, of course, is the DJI Osmo Mini, which is a tiny little camera uh, gimbal. Um, but this is considerably less in terms of uh, cost. This retails in the UK at around about nine to nine pounds, whereas the Osmo Mini is considerably more expensive. It's sort of three and a half times more. Um, so this is probably a better option if you're looking to do a bit of vlogging on a budget. So what do you get for your money? Well, you get um, your gimbal, you get your little stand, you get a USB-C connector, which you use to charge the gimbal up with and probably add firmware updates and you also get a little pouch which will no doubt stay in the box because I very rarely use pouches. So let's have a look at the gimbal itself. So this is your little your little stand which will come in useful if you want to record b-roll of yourself and this is the gimbal itself so it is a really small form factor I have to say it's a really impressively small form factor for a gimbal and the reason it is is because it's foldable so if we just turn this little knob here and extend it to its full. I mean, it's still considerably smaller than my current gimbal, which is the uh, Zion Smooth 4. You can see them together and it's also considerably lighter as well. So it's quite a cool little thing. And I also like the fact that it's all secured when it's folded down by these little clips. So you've got a clip there, you've got a clip here, and you've got a clip here, and that releases your gimbal off. Uh, but when you go to pack it away and off to travel again, you just clip it all back up. So a little, oops, little clip there, little clip there, and a little clip there. Fold it down. And that's ready to go in your pocket now. Will it fit in everyone's pocket? Probably not. <laughs> not if you've got a pair of tight jeans on, that's for sure. But if you've got a pair of cargo shorts on or you're wearing a coat or you've got a small bag, you know, this, this thing, this gimbal here, I have, to, I have to work out where I'm going to put that. That doesn't fit in any small bag or any of my pockets when I'm going out doing any sort of vlogging in London. Whereas this one uh, will fit nice and comfortably either in my pocket or in my bag. I was initially quite surprised at how well it held my iPhone. This is an iPhone 8 Plus, um, which is a large phone, heavy phone. And I was surprised because a lot of my original some of my older gimbals wouldn't go anywhere near holding this and they're considerably larger than this but the reason that it can do it is because if you look most gimbals hold your phone over here so much further that way whereas this one's centered and that 
is the only drawback that I find with this gimbal. So where my phone is centered here, I've got this right in the way of trying to do a specific maneuver that I like to do on my gimbals. So on my B-roll footage, you'll often see this sort of rise up through the scene to reveal the subject in the background. And you just can't do that on this because as soon as you pull this down, your phone is not going because this is in the way, which is a bit of a problem, but it's probably the only drawback that I found really using this so far. So let's talk about the modes on this. We've got the follow mode, which it's currently engaged in, and it's, it's a little snappy, I think, a little bit snappy, but it's not too bad. You probably, I haven't really delved into the, into the um, app on the phone yet, so I might be able to slow it down, but at the moment it's just a, a tad snappy. I'd like it just to drag a little bit to get some really nice smooth panning. Um, obviously you've got the up and the down, but that doesn't, doesn't work on this. But if you hold this trigger at the back, you can pan down and you can pan up and the phone is held in that position. So that's not too bad. Uh, and then if I click the mode button once, I'm then locked. So that's your, that's your locked mode there where it will just fix on the subject and you can just wander about and you know, you can use it for the older uh, sort of pull across which works quite well. And then if I double click the mode button, the phone then goes into vertical orientation or portrait, which is gonna be useful for people who might wanna use it for their Instagram stories or um, Facebook or something like that. I'll never use it personally, I don't think, but it's, it's useful to know it's there. And there's no, with most phones or most gimbals, you have to then, you have to take the phone out, readjust the gimbal, put it back in. But with this one, it's just a double click and you're there. So yeah, it's not too bad in that respect. Now the gimbal also comes with an app from FireTech, um, which I've installed, but for some reason for me, it keeps crashing. Uh, it doesn't like to record uh, video and it keeps crashing. So I'm not sure whether that's my iOS, uh, my version of the app, my incompetence in installing it, or whether there's slightly buggy issues with the app, I'm not 100% sure. So I think what I'll do is I'll try and get to grips with that. And if I can get it working, I'll probably do another video on how to use the app because it does have face tracking, object tracking, time-lapse, panoramic. It's got lots of options. Uh, it gives you manual control of the, of the, of the camera as well, um, but I can't get it to work. So at the moment, I'm not using it. So let's talk about the good points and the bad points. A huge plus point for me is the size. I've been looking for a while now for a solution for going into London or wherever I go with street photography to carry in a bag. I hate carrying a bag around in London. It makes me conspicuous and I wanna blend into the crowd. I wanna just be able to pick my camera out of my pocket and I wanna be able to pick my vlogging gear out of my pocket. And having a nice small gimbal like this now allows me just to drop it into my coat pocket or into my jeans pocket and I can just wander around, pull it out when I need it, do a bit of B-roll, take the phone off, drop it back in my pocket. So that's a huge positive. Um, also the price point, I mean, for a hundred pound, it's pretty good, well, 99 pounds. You're not really gonna get a gimbal much cheaper than that, uh, especially one that holds onto uh, a phone my size. So again, that's a big plus. On the negative side, a gimbal so small holding a phone the size of mine is going to have a drawback because of the way it holds it and I can't do that pan up shot that I really like to do but that's just a minor issue I won't I won't use this gimbal when I go out and do landscape photography anyway because I'll have a bag with me and I'll be able to carry a larger one but yeah that is a drawback possibly the the snappiness of the of the follow um, I wonder whether there might be um, a setting for that on the app um, which I can't quite get to work at the moment maybe once I've got that working there might be something that I can adjust the sensitivity settings or something 
uh, or maybe Failtech will will release um, will release a, a firmware update or something that'll allow um, you to change the sensitivity settings. I'd just like it to drag a bit more so the panning is a little bit smoother. But that's a minor nitpick, really. Uh, overall, would I recommend this uh, gimbal? Yeah, I think I would. I think I would recommend it. Um, I'm certainly going to use it now for my street photography vlogs uh, and it will be in my bag most of the time. I may even take it out on my landscape vlogs because it's small enough, it's light enough, it isn't going to make that much difference to the payload uh, when I'm out and about. So yeah, I think I would recommend it. So if you're interested in it, it's not really a sales pitch, but if you're interested in it, I'll stick a description in below and you can have a look. There are plenty of other reviews as well on the on YouTube, so why don't you go check those out if it's uh, something that you might fancy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Back to regular programming next time, and I'll see you again soon.